This is the largest salt flats in the entire world. This is Sala de Uyuni, the world's largest salt flats located in Bolivia. A bucket list item for me ever since I heard about it. I took a three day tour with an English guide on a 4x4 from Uyuni and it was an absolute adventure. The landscape kept changing every few minutes, from volcanoes to deserts to lagoons, from heat to snow, from small shrubs to giant cacti to plants looking like broccoli. The first day is all about the salt flats. The next day you go deeper into the wilderness to see some incredible landscapes and the last day is pretty much just getting back to Uyuni and making a few stops along the way. We took an overnight bus from La Paz to reach Uyuni. At about 7 am in Uyuni, we woke up in the bus to see that there was a blockade by the locals and all traffic was halted. Luckily, our tour operator came to the blockade and took us into town. Upon reaching, we went out of town via some unpaved dirt paths which eventually joined the highway and we were back on plan. Sala is located at an elevation of 12,000 feet and we went in winter so it was pretty cold. It is four times the size of Luxembourg and these salt flats is what remains of prehistoric lakes that existed 30 to 40,000 years ago. It has also been used as a filming location for movies such as Star Wars The Last Jedi. And the fun fact is, the Earth's observation satellites use this vast salt plains to calibrate their altitude meters. We met our guide and rest of the group in a little salt mining village called Kolchani just outside of Uyuni and our trip had officially begun at the salt refinery where we learned about how the salt is mined in the flats, is refined and sold for consumption. The salt is pretty much consumed by locals as the price is not worth for exports. The refinery was also a souvenir store that sold salt crystals, salt alpacas, salt flamingos and a whole bunch of salt carvings. From there, we drove right into the salt flats and our first stop was to see the eyes of the salt which was water bubbling up in a pond. I put my hand in it and saw it was cold so it wasn't boiling water but was high pressure water from underground. It was also red in colour due to the high iron content in the water and smelt like sulphur. There was a guy with some cool props so we took a bunch of crazy perspective photos. Our next stop was the most photographed place in Uyuni, the flags and the Dakar rally sign. We had lunch at the salt hotel that is made entirely out of salt including the rooms, tables and chairs. The food however did not have salt in it. We went deeper into the salt flats and stopped to take some more funny photos and videos where creativity was the only limit to what photos we could take. This is Inkawasi Island that has giant cacti and coral rock formations. We did a small hike on the island and learned more about the locals that inhabited the region. Our guide drove us to a place where we could catch a great sunset. It was dry season so I didn't expect there to be water but to my delight there were some places with water that turned the salt flat into giant mirrors for some beautiful photo shots. We went to the small village of Via Candelaria and stayed in a salt hostel. This is the salt hostel we stayed in last night. Uh, some of the bricks here are made of salt and that's what they call this as the salt hostel. The room is pretty basic. There was no electricity until 2am. They were fixing something and there was no water in the morning. Uh, so yeah, pretty basic at that. But the views are incredible. The next day we went deeper into the wild and our first stop was the train that goes from Bolivia to Chile carrying silver ore to be refined and we saw a huge volcano in the backdrop spewing some smoke in the distance. We went into the small desert of Chiguana and saw some broccoli looking plant species native to the region that had adapted to the lack of water. We drove to a nearby lagoon to see flamingos in their natural habitat. There were several lagoons and all bustling with flamingos who migrate to Chile right around this time of the year when we were there. It was extremely cold outside but these flamingos can withstand a lot of cold and they were just busy eating. The entire landscape was extremely beautiful and to add to it a wild herd of vicuñas showed up to drink water. 
I definitely tried to get closer to them to pet them but they just ran away. We saw several herds of vicunias all throughout the day. A good feeling that their numbers are growing strong. After lunch, we stopped at a giant rock to see some cute chinchillas and I shared one of my Oreos with them. I was able to pet one of them and they have such soft fur. We saw some white dust falling on us and realized it was snow. As we went further into the wild, the snowfall increased and it just got more and more cold. We saw the rock tree which is a lava cooled rock formation. This is Laguna Colorada or the Red Lagoon. The red color comes from algae and rich minerals. The white specks is not snow but actually borax which is mined in the region. The region has a wealth of natural minerals but not that much mining is going on. Afterwards, we went to the top of a large volcano called Sol de Manana, that is 5000 meters in altitude where we saw natural geysers spewing out steam juxtapositioned with freezing cold and a snowfall, an incredible feeling. Good morning from somewhere in Bolivia. This is where we spent the night. The accommodation was extremely basic. It was very very cold <laughs> uh, but the best part was that right there there are some thermal hot springs and it was absolutely wonderful. There was no light pollution so we saw such a beautiful night sky. The next day I woke up and saw an amazing sunrise from our accommodation and it was truly out in the middle of nowhere. The first stop of the day was the Green Lagoon where the green color comes to the high content of magnesium in the water. We went to the border of Chile to drop off some of the tour members and we waited there for a while and saw a fox running around. From here we turned around and went to a small village inside of Bolivia to have lunch and were greeted by alpacas of the village. The last stop of the tour was the train cemetery where there were vintage 19th century trains just abandoned and left to rust and die. However, now the local communities are trying to preserve the site as it has become a part of their heritage and history. This tour has definitely been the highlight of Bolivia for me. If there is one thing to see in Bolivia, it is this 3-day tour.